Now we'll start off with our feature on the show today as we focus on Nigeria's agricultural sector. Well, it's no cherry news that over 70% of Nigerian food products are rejected in the global market, specifically by European Union countries and the United States of America, following the reported poor quality packaging and also labeling. Well, this comes at a time when the emphasis is on economic diversification and strengthening the Naira. The many years of dependence on oil have also been detrimental to economic development and are no longer sustainable. All the sources of non-oil revenue must be identified to bolster the economy. And now, without a doubt, interagency collaboration would also motivate diversification of the economy through a systematic mechanism to facilitate export from Nigeria. The organized private sector organizations such as Manufacturers Association of Nigeria and the Chambers of Commerce and Industry should also brace up too, as mediocrity in production and packaging has been part of the challenges in this regard. Now, Nigeria is keen to export agricultural products for economic diversification. This possibility is apparent in the amount of rice and other crops grown, and it is therefore necessary for the government to ensure that nothing stands in the way of increased exports. We really have a serious problem that needs to be addressed by the government at all levels. Specifically, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council should also wake up to the relevant facilities and faculties of our tertiary institutions to step up research in production and packaging of products for exports. Well, joining me to discuss this and much more, virtually I have Adeto Kumbu Adewani, the Principal Consultant, Fortress 20. Kumbu it's good to have you on The Breakfast Show this morning. Good morning, it's good to be here. Now, understanding the scope of exports, we have to look at our, first and foremost, the quality of our local production and consumption, meeting that demand, before we now start saying we have to aggressively push the frontier of export and ensure that we have very strong standardization, value addition, and much more. But we seem to be deficient both in local production and also meeting standardization for exports abroad. So we've had attempts and we've had kicks back, kickbacks from abroad. What do you think are the missing elements here that we have on ground? Okay, the, the, one of the most important things is that... Um, for a long time, agriculture has been neglected, and um, we're just getting back onto non oil exports. So, we have to look at the ecosystem as a whole. So, if you're talking about agricultural commodity exports, then you have to go back to the farm, you have to go back to doing soil tests because some of the reasons why um, these products are rejected is due to contaminants in the products, and those contaminants are even found in the soil. So when you go back to farming, you go back down the value chain and then look at farming that is safe, um, food safety and ethics, then you begin to um, meet up with the international standards. But if you continue to push out what we currently have, um, that we've always had, which we have not farmed with a purpose, then in the international market, there is most likely going to be a rejection. So we have to go back down the value chain and then encourage anyone who is going into agriculture to not just plant, but to test their structures to see that the quality infrastructure, infrastructure is top here at the beginning of the transaction. Mm. And then also talking about quality now, that also tilts towards the area of value addition as well. Take, for example, cocoa. Nigeria has the potential to produce as much as possible, but we are not having the best food being put forward there. And expanding the base, because when you look at the value addition of cocoa, you could always have other aspects that you could also use to broaden your base for revenue generation. Within the scope of value addition now and also research, to what extent do you think we now have to aggressively inculcate this in our agenda in our agriculture agenda if we're still looking at local production because enough is not still done within that regard of research value addition expanding the scope of what we can get other materials we can get from just the raw uh, product as it comes so like um, i always say the export ecosystem is um, totally empty it's an ecosystem that needs to be built up from scratch Research is very, very critical. If you take a visit to the Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria, you understand that there isn't so much research going on. There are also many young people in the research institutes. 
So research is absolutely critical. Funding research is absolutely critical. And then when we talk about value addition, is also part of the ecosystem. So value addition comes at a cost. So when we add value to whatever it is we are adding value to, are we going to be competitive with the other people whose costs are lower than our costs? So when we and challenges with infrastructure, especially with addition, would it be profitable for those involved? So it's a whole system to come together and say, yes, this is what we want to do, and we are committed to doing it. So the research institutes need to be used with um, funding and um, a lot of young, a, a lot of younger people, new technologies, um, um, some some sort of. Um, um, artificial intelligence, a lot of things need to come into play with the research institute. The research institutes are there, but the kind of um, challenges that we are dealing with and the kind of environment that we are dealing with has gone past where we currently are at. So we need to catch up with the rest of the world. We are quite behind where these things are concerned. Mm. And then I'd like to come on, let's also look at the issue of storage power is critical to storage and then also looking at the shelf life of these products that we also have issues around uh, port congestion taxation and much more these also stifle and also elongate the period these products have to stay at the port to what extent do you think we can now get a little bit more abreast with what needs to be done to ensure that we extend the shelf life of this product and still keep it as fresh as possible and also ensuring that we have improved uh, Port processes, especially within the line of uh, automation, and also getting familiar with the w with the processes of uh, exporting. Because if you're not well informed, there's a high tendency that your products would not get exported; they just lay their fallow at the ports. Yes, correct. With the issue of storage, storage is um, is a two-way. So. There's a storage that comes with having the right storage facilities. So most warehouses are not export warehouses. So even if you store your books in those warehouses, there's a likelihood of deterioration. You have also spoken about the port congestion. So port congestion also poses a threat to deterioration, especially of agricultural communities. So if I've stayed in the, um, traffic on my way to Apapa for like two to, to three weeks or a month, the um, commodities begin to deteriorate in transit. So storage is absolutely critical. Then on the processes of exports and on the ports, um, the challenges of the ports are, are very, very, it's, it's, it's something that is affecting exports from Nigeria. It's throwing a lot of, um, it's throwing a lot on the transaction cycle of every of every exporter. So instead of the seamless movements of um, goods to the port, you find out that goods are in transit for a prolonged period, in some cases two, three weeks, just trying to get into the port. And so port operations, you know, to encourage exports, there's, there's such a thing as the ease of doing exports, and logistics is one of them. In fact, in choosing the country of um, origin, um, your buyer choosing a country of origin, your buyer is considering the logistics of getting the goods out of your country to his own country because he has also signed another contract with another buyer that is time-based. So when these transactions are not um, timely, mm. the, the, the likelihood is that the buyer won't even choose your destination. So he might choose a similar destination or a nearby destination, say Ghana or Cote d'Ivoire, if their port operations are better than our own port operations because of the transaction cycle. So he doesn't want to be he doesn't want to be stuck um, in Nigeria trying to get goods out of the port for almost a month or two when he can easily go to Ghana or the Republic or Ivory Coast. So that even affects the number of transactions that we get as a country, our ports operating seamlessly. So there's a need for everyone to come out and work together um, um, collaborate 
effectively instead of working in silos. So the customs need to come out, the shipping council needs to come out, the exporters need to come out. Everyone who is in the export ecosystem now needs to come out and work together so that we can promote exports from Nigeria. Okay, let's now let's wrap up our conversation now with uh, prospects from the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Now, we have to solidify our position in terms of our level of competitiveness within the continent. Now, if we are still having the same old challenges repeat themselves on the back of the AFCFTA, do you see any prospect of us keen into this uh, spread of international trade on a continental basis? Well, um, for AFCTA, yes, there, there, there is a prospect of us came into, into AFCTA because um, the exporters have started coming together um, with the network of um, practicing non oil exporters, for example, has started to have discussions with various exporters across um, the non oil sector. And so exporters, logistics, everyone is coming together to make sure that we partake um, of the ASTA. Our competitiveness would not improve overnight. It's, it's some work that we have to put in. And um, it's, it's interesting and impressive that a lot of people have started to put in the work. The agencies are beginning to come on board. NEPC, NEXIM, um, the Nigerian Customs, the Nigerian Quarantine Services. Everyone is beginning to come on board because we are beginning to see that until we begin to work together, some of these um, programs, just like the AGOA, might be out of our reach. But for the AFTA, I know that um, there have been several discussions and there has been a lot of collaborative efforts to make sure that this is not just something that happened and Nigeria didn't partake of, but something that we are positioning for as we continue to work towards making the ex export ecosystem stable and viable for Nigeria. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. And we hope that Nigeria takes seriously the issue of promoting agriculture as an economic agenda to ensure that we have the best food being put forward and position us on the global market. Exporting of our agricultural products definitely would also help us to expand our revenue base and not just focus on oil. Thank you very much for your time once again. Thank you for having me.